Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today I just want to have a I just want to have a conversation with you. I just feel spiritually drained this past couple weeks. And it's because I've been gearing up to do this video for Dining at the Table of Demons. And you know, a lot of people will say like, "Oh, you can't dine at the Table of Demons." That means, you know, don't engage in pagan practices. Don't be involved in the occult. Don't do witchcraft, divination, tarot cards, all of that kind of stuff, you know. Some people will even go further and they will correctly tell you, you know, don't do drugs. Because we know like all of these cartels and everything like that, they're praying to certain demons, certain principalities before they go out and they, you know, ship whatever they're going to ship. And it's important, yeah, don't do divination, don't do drugs, obviously. But something really stuck out to me this past week. And it's just, it's like spiritually draining. That's why I'm laying on a couch right now. I just feel spiritually drained. Like I've been doing interviews with people every day this week. Every single day I've had an interview with somebody Last week I was doing interviews as well because I said, you know, hey, if you guys have experience with the occult, like, reach out to me. I want to interview you about it. So those videos are going to be coming. So I've been doing those. And then in addition, I've just been thinking and praying about this issue. So everybody will tell you, like, okay, dining at the table of demons, don't be in the occult don't do drugs. Uh, some people will tell you, you know, don't eat food sacrificed to idols, which is true. But at the same time, there are nuances to eating food sacrificed to idols because Paul specifically talks about it, you know. Um, that is why I get so frustrated with other YouTube ministers who put out videos about like halal or whatever and then you have people that are just freaking out like I don't even know if this has been sacrificed to a DD. I don't even know so you just have people in fear all the time and that's just really frustrating to me because Paul has already addressed um when you can eat food sacrificed to idols specifically for this reason and there is nuance in there. And if you guys want to watch my video going verse by verse through Romans 14, you guys can check that out, you know, right up here, wherever. Links are always in the description box below. So with Dining at the Table of Demons, you know, this is not this is not the official Dining at the Table of Demons video. Um, but people will tell you, don't eat food sacrificed to idols, don't engage in pagan practices. And don't do witchcraft, divination, don't do drugs. But there's something else that people don't talk about. And I feel like as a church, we need to talk about it. We need to have a discussion about this. Because it allows Satan to have a legal right into people's lives. You know, when people were honoring demons, it wasn't just with food offerings. It wasn't just with gifts of gold and silver and jewels. It wasn't even with, you know, ritual sex. It wasn't even just with sacrificing their sons and daughters, passing them through the fire. But what a lot of people don't know is that abuse, abusing children, abusing other people, was sometimes a form of worship to these pagan deities. And the more pain or the more adrenaline the victim suffered, the stronger the sacrifice. And these were always to pagan deities. And people in the church don't talk about abuse and how when you abuse people, whether it's through emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, psychological abuse. You are dining at the table of demons. And you can't do this 
and also dine at the table of the Lord. And this really, it really has just been on my mind because, you know, when I was driving back from Phoenix, I really wanted to put out a video because it was Father's Day. I was driving back from Phoenix to go to Las Vegas and a couple of the videos I had filmed, I just felt in my spirit, like, don't put them out because we all know what's going on with YouTube. And it was just, it's not germane to the gospel. So I just didn't feel the Holy Spirit on it. And I felt more of a tug of the Holy Spirit telling me not to put out these videos just because it's like, it's not worth losing my channel on, you know, what I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about my experience going to an Orthodox um, synagogue for Shavuot Pentecost and I just, I don't feel safe. I don't feel like my channel is safe putting that video out, even though it's just generally talking about my experiences with that. But, um, I put out a video on Father's Day. It was just really quick. I was in the parking lot of a gas station that we stopped at. And I said, you know, no matter what your, what, no matter what your relationship is with your earthly father, just know that if you belong to Jesus, that you are heirs according to the promise, that God loves you, he cares about you, he knows your name, you can call on him day and night, and he's going to answer. Which is true. If you belong to Jesus, you have a new name. You've been adopted into God's family. And I, I didn't just do a video. I also put a post on social media. I did it on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and then our private discussion group on Facebook. And I noticed I didn't just get comments. Like, I didn't get very many comments, but I got a lot of people reposting this. And I think that the church is embarrassed to talk about the abuse that people suffer because why is it that so many people can resonate with the fact that, you know, no matter what relationship you have with your earthly dad, like, there's a God out there who loves you and cares about you, and he is your father. You know, so many people experience broken homes because of abuse, whether it's, you know, relationship, like abuse between parents or boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, whatever. And then you'll see that carry on between, you know, parent to child and then between children, all sorts of abuse. And I'm not just talking about sexual abuse. I'm still talking about physical abuse, emotional abuse. And we have to recognize that abuse, no matter what kind of abuse that it is, it's something that the devil uses, Satan's kingdom uses, to have a legal right into people's lives. Because it honors Satan. It honors demonic deities, even if you don't mean to do it. It honors demonic deities when you abuse people. Because this is how Satan acts. This is how Satan acts towards people towards God's creation. He is abusive towards them. He's here to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. So when we do these things, we're honoring demonic deities. We're honoring principalities in Satan's kingdom. And when we honor satanic principalities, we're dining at that table with them. And this is where Satan has crept in. Satan's kingdom has gained a foothold into so many Christians' lives because we're too ashamed to talk about abuse. You know, everybody can quote, honor thy father and thy mother. But how many people also follow it up with parents do not exasperate your children, which is the very next line. It's like... People will say, and I'm not just saying, like, only parents are abusive. You know, there's people who have aunts and uncles who are abusive. Family, friends, neighbors, babysitters, you know, grandparents, whatever. 
co-workers, even friends, teachers. You know, it just runs the gamut, what people have experienced. But, um, when people abuse others, they allow Satan to have a legal right, not only into their life, but into the victim's life. Because when you abuse somebody, resentment takes hold. Fear takes hold. And we know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So when you're doing these things, you're placing that spirit, you're putting that spirit, you're welcoming that spirit into your victim's life. And then you want to say that you're a Christian, that you are, you know, dining at the table of the Lord. When you're welcoming, you're ushering in these demonic spirits. I think it's time for Christians to get real and to realize that you're not honoring your parents by lying. You don't uphold a commandment by breaking another commandment. One of the Ten Commandments, thou shall not lie. And yes, one of the commandments is honor thy father and thy mother, but that's not let me rewrite history or let me lie on their behalf so that they can keep up this facade that they're, you know, perfect people. And I'm not just saying, I'm not saying this about, you know, my parents specifically or something. I'm talking about this like in general, like, um, you know, I have just heard the most heinous things from people that email me. And it's just like some of this stuff, I don't even know how to deal with it because I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm just some random person on YouTube that loves Jesus and likes to talk about the Bible. But some people out there have experienced some crazy stuff. And when we don't talk about it, when we're not honest about it, when we, you know, feel shame about what has happened to us, and I'm just saying this in general, like us Christians in general, when we won't admit what has happened to us because we're ashamed about it, we are allowing Satan to continue to be in our life. Because if we pretend like it didn't happen, then there's no reason for us to forgive people. There's nothing for us to forgive. But we know that something did happen. So we're lying by omission. And lying gives Satan a foothold. But not only that, resentment, anger, um, covetousness, hate, all take root and it just festers and festers and festers because people don't want to talk about what has happened. People don't want to just bring to the light what has happened to them. And I think Christians need to get over this facade of like, let's pretend like nothing has ever happened. Everything that we've ever done in our whole lives is perfect and that there's nothing wrong with us, that everybody else in our life is messed up because of just who they are, and, and we didn't have any hand in how um, they have, you know, become. Like, you know, as a parent, your children are a reflection of you. Um, the people that you hang around are a reflection of you. So if you treat your friends bad, like it's all it's obviously going to have an effect on them same if you treat your children bad it's going to have an effect on them and vice versa so christians i i really want people to think about the fact that you know it really resonates with people that god is our father and that he loves us and cares about us but at the same time we also need to remember that even if we don't comment on things you know, something is still resonating with us. Sorry, my hand's getting tired. <laughs> something is still resonating with us where it's like... People have experienced something where it's bothering them that they have like a bad parental relationship with somebody. And I want people to just be honest with themselves and just admit out loud. It doesn't matter if it's to another person. It doesn't matter if it's like written down in a comment or something, but I think you need to verbalize what has happened to you so that you can allow yourself to forgive that person and you can repent of the anger and the bitterness. Don't get it twisted. I am not telling you that you have to 
rekindle a relationship with somebody who's done something wrong to you. But just in general, um, before we go into this video about talking about dining with demons or anything like that, I want people to seriously consider <sighs> admitting what has happened to them, not making excuses, not lying by omission, by pretending it didn't happen. Verbalize and, you know, tell the truth about what you've experienced because that not only cuts off Satan's legal right to your life because you're not lying by omission, but also you're exposing that root of bitterness, the anger, the sadness, the fear to the light of Jesus Christ. When you, when you finally admit it, it's like, it's out in the open. People know, or at least I know. So therefore, it can't continue to, to sit there and fester in my life. So once that happens, my husband's coming home right now. Um, once that happens, I think you are going to see a big breakthrough in your life. So with that said, since <laughs> this has been me rambling for like 16 minutes, I'm going to include a link down in the description box really quick of just an article that I would like you to read. And this is not going to be a video that I edit or anything like this. I'm just going to immediately post it from my phone. So it's not going to be fancy like all my other videos. But I don't know. It's just something that's really been on my heart. Like people need to understand that demons don't just use the occult and drugs and witchcraft um, and food sacrifice to idols as a way of gaining a foothold in your life. They also do it through abuse, whether you've been abused or you abuse other people. And when we finally shine light on that, that's when we're going to be able to say, you know what, I'm tired of dining at this table. I don't want to be at this table anymore. I need to repent of these things so that I can go and dine at the Lord's table. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I hope you guys will like, subscribe, and share, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.